Hello and welcome to my lecture on installing Jupyter Notebook with Anaconda distribution. So to start off, you want to go to anaconda.com slash download and then you want to download the appropriate version of Anaconda for your computer. So in my case, it's Windows, but it could be for Mac OS as well as Linux. So just scroll down here and if you click on Mac OS, it will give you Mac OS installer, Linux, Linux installer. So just go back to Windows, just scroll back up here. Now, if you're not too sure whether or not you have a 64-bit or 32-bit operating system for your computer, in my case at least, what you do is go to Computer, right-click, Properties, and as you can see here, System Type 64-bit operating system. Now, for the remainder of this course, I'm not actually going to be using this computer. This computer I'm only using for Section 1 just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is click on the green button and this is gonna give me the 64-bit. Otherwise, if you are 32-bit, click here. This will download the Anaconda distribution which will contain Jupyter Notebook, which is the IDE, the Integrated Development Environments, along with the latest version of Python, which is 3.6. And this is gonna take some time, so I'm gonna skip ahead, as you can see, is 510 megabytes. So once the latest version of Anaconda 5.0.0 has been downloaded, what you want to do is go to the Downloads folder. And as you can see at the top here, I have an older version of Anaconda, which is 4.4. So you want to double click on the 5.0 version. And then it will just run through the installation process. So I'm going to get rid of this window now and click run then we click next so just make sure that if you have any other applications running that you close them then click agree just me and we'll do anaconda 5 I already have one called anaconda 3 so because I have one downloaded called anaconda 3 I don't want to override it so I'm going to call this Anaconda 5. Then add Anaconda to my path environment variable. So make sure you actually tick this despite it being red here. Don't worry about this here. And if you haven't got any uh, Python on your computer, what you want to do is click here as well. But because I already have a version of Python on my computer, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to cancel that, but if you haven't, make sure you tick this as well. Then click install, and it will go about the process of installing. So I'm just going to skip ahead, and then I'll come back to the process of setting up Jupyter Notebook. Welcome to Jupyter Notebook Overview Lecture. So to start off, if you right-click anywhere in the desktop, you can see there's no option at the moment for a command terminal, which is what we need. So what we do is simply control and shift. So you hold both control and shift and then right click. And now you can see you have the option, which is open command window here. Click. And now you have the command terminal. OK, so let's say we wanted to create an actual folder. So we can do that in the command terminal. We do mkdir, which is for make directory. And then we'll do, let's say, section underscore one, enter. And as you can see, now we have section underscore one folder here. And we can actually go into the folder. So we do cd section underscore one. And now we're actually in the folder. And we can get out of it as well. So we do cd dot dots. And now we're back in the desktop. And then cd dot dots. And now we're only in c colon backslash users backslash michael and then in your case it will be obviously a different name unless you have the same name as mine and we can actually get rid of all of this here so all of these lines of code that we want to remove for windows users it's going to be cls like myself if you're a mac it's going to be clear so do cls enter and what we can do is actually run python code in the command terminal so we do python enter and now you can see we have Python 3.6.1 Anaconda. And my version is 
5.0 and the most recent version is 5.0.0 which you should be using okay so we've got hi equals hello worlds we do hi and you've got the string of hello worlds we do some arithmetic of 90 times 10 got 900s we're going to do my underscore one two three four my underscore list and you've got the list okay so we want to exit out of that we do just quit with the parentheses here and then we'll do cls or clear if you're on mac okay so now let's say we want to go into jupyter notebook so we do jupyter notebook and this might take a little bit of time if you've not run this before okay so it's going to open up a jupyter notebook and note that this is not being run on the internet this is not being run or hosted on the internet this is actually hosted or run locally on your computer because this is an ide integrated development environments where you can type up code okay so if i just show you here for a moment now this doesn't look exactly the same for instance it doesn't have the dots folders here so dots ssh or dots spider 2 but you'll notice that it does share most of the same folders so we've got anaconda 2 3 4 and 5 and you should find some of them here so 3 4 and the 5 and 2 are somewhere else it seems anaconda 5 okay great and you have automates well, these are just folders that i've created and some of them are just of course standard like desktop documents downloads etc okay and it's found by c colon backslash users backslash michael so of course this will be different here with your own name all right so let's say for instance that we want to create a folder so we'll do folder here so you go to new we won't do python just yet we've got text file and folder let's do folder and if we scroll down and we'll find untitled folder so it's also going to be called untitled folder initially and then we'll retitle this let's call this let's rename it section one folder and then i'll scroll down to section one folder okay we'll go into this and now as you can see it's empty at the moment and if i go here as well we've got section one folder so I click on that so as you can see it's empty just as it's empty here and if i do python you should get the untitled and dot ipynb is short for ipython notebook because Jupyter Notebook actually used to be called IPython Notebook. Okay, so let's just change the title. We'll call this first page. And as you can see, it's first page now. I'm just going to make this full screen. And what you can do is add some more cells. So these are called cells, as you can see here. And we can also cut them. So if we do the scissor icon, let's just go back to making a few more. And we can actually hide these so we can get rid of this by toggle header and we can also hide the toolbar of new b but i'm going to be referring to them at least within this lecture okay so let's say we want to run our first piece of code so if we do print and let's say we have enter plus shift equals run code Okay, so if I hold shift and enter, you get the output. So you have the inputs and you have the output. There's another way of also doing this. So we do print arrow. And if you hit this arrow icon here, you also get an output. Okay, great. So let's say we want to just delete these. And let's say we'll do some strings. So hi, hello yo and hey and if i run this by shift and enter we only get the output for the the final string in this cell so what if we wanted it for all of them 
Well, what we have to do is print. We have to put print around each of these four strings. Let's say we had a thousand or maybe just 20. That would be pretty tedious to be able to type out print 20 times or a thousand times. But there's a way of being able to simultaneously write the print statement or any piece of code at the same time. So if we do control, so just hold the control button, then left tab, left tab, left tab, and left tab on your mouse. And I just need to undo this one here. And we do print. And of course, we actually have to get rid of these. So, of course, just hold control, then left tab, left tab, left tab, and left tab. Delete that. And then we'll do control, left tab, left tab, and left tab. Okay, so we run this. And now we have hi, hello, yo, and hey. So we've got all the strings printed out. Great. And what we can also do is, let's say I do this, and then we run the code. We get an error, syntax error, because it's missing the closing parentheses here. So if I do L, this will tell me the number of lines. So in this case, it says line 7 where the error is, and now I know exactly where the error is. I can just check 7 here. Okay, and if this was, let's say, a thousand lines of code, and I had the error, instead of it being 7, it was on line 220. I know exactly where to go because I can just scan through the numbers on this left-hand side. Okay, so we just put the closing parenthesis here, and we run that again, and it works perfectly fine. Let's say I accidentally deleted some code like that. And it could be, let's say, 100 lines of code. Well, all you have to do is just simply Control and Z, and that undoes the error. And if you want to highlight everything, you can do, instead of doing with your mouse, which can be quite time consuming if you have a massive cell of code, you can do Control and A. And now you can just copy instead. Okay, great. So let's say, for instance, we just delete all that. And I'm just going to undo the line there. And let's say I had high. So I'm doing them in separate cells, Python, run me, and let's do a number of 10 times 22. Now, I want to run all four of these lines of code within each of these cells, and I can't do that individually. So, well, I could, but it would be, I want to do it simultaneously, and I can't do it obviously simultaneously like this. I'm going to do one at a time. So a way to get around that is... Let's just delete that and do 10, 2, 2. Way to get around that is simply going to cell and then run all. And as you can see, it's output all of the cells. Okay. And note if, say, for instance, I had an error here and then I run the cells again you'll note that it won't run the other two because there's an error here. Until that's rectified, it won't run the other two down here. So if I go back to run all, it works fine. Okay, great. And I would encourage you to check out all the options available within the Jupyter Notebook IDE. So let's just check here. We have, we can create a new one from one to two. And we'll just rename this. So instead of being untitled, second page and if I just double click here you can see we have second page here dot i pi n b okay and I go back here let's say we want to add a comment well what we can do is one of two things we can do the hashtag this is a comment and if I run this with shift and enter you don't get any output but let's say for instance I want to Let's say I have run me instead, and then I have don't, don't run me. So we'll get don't run me, but I want to have run me instead. Well, what you can do, of course, is just the hashtag, but there's another way that's a little bit more convenient. And that is, you can simply highlight the line or just go on the line where the code is that you don't want to run and then hold the control and forward slash. And as you can see, now it is a comment. 
we run that and we can also uncomment it so if we do again control and forward slash and now you have don't run me okay great so let's just check out a few more things here so we can run all above all ab all below or let's say for instance we want to do all of this code here so we do of course control left tab left tab print and we'll get rid of these closing parentheses at the moment and then we'll put them on the end here so control and left tab for each of them then closing parentheses and of course if we run this the error we'll get all these outputs but let's say i wanted to hide all this output let's say we had a massive amount of output here uh, what we can do is go to current output then toggle and as you can see it's hidden the output and if we go and click here you get the output again so it's kind of like a drawer which is pretty neat okay and if i just go back to the terminal here we can actually create another one so if i go right click command prompt and then let's say we cd into section one cd section underscore one and that should work system cannot find path specified okay that should be desktop excuse me cd desktop okay and then we'll do cd section underscore one and then we'll do cls or clear of your mac so make some space there and now we can actually run Jupyter Notebook within the section one folder that we've created. Jupyter Notebook. And this should take a moment. And that will open up a new one. And if we go in here, as you can see, it's empty at the moment. But if I create a Python, and we'll call this section underscore one Python. As you can see, section underscore one Python. Okay, great. And let's say, for instance, we wanted to add some cells here. And we can, let's say we do some code here, like say 10 times 20, run that. But we want something here. So what we can do is insert a cell here. So let's say we have hello and we want to add a line here well I've already done that but let's say add another one so you have two now okay great anyway that concludes my lecture for the overview of Jupyter Notebook I would encourage you to have a look at all of the available options within Jupyter Notebook so file edit view inserts cell etc. Okay, thanks for, li for listening and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the Q&A. Cheers.